This is Damon Tennant with the Get Your GED Now test preparation series and our GED video lesson of this week is simplifying square roots. And so we're going to focus on simplifying square roots. That's something we're going to see uh, a good amount of uh, on the uh, GED test. And by a good amount of, I just mean it's simply there. If you've watched my other lessons, you know that there are percentages and breakdowns of the types of questions that you're going to specifically see on the GED math test. And so this is just uh, one type of those questions um, that you're going to see simplifying square roots. But before we get to simplifying square roots, because we might see the square root sign and the number 80. OK, and so the the question might be to simplify a square root and you're probably not going to see something this basic. Uh, what we're going to work on as we move forward you're, is more likely to be seen, but I'm just trying to start from the beginning and then increase us up. So you might get a, a question like that. How do you simplify the square root of 80? Uh, although, as I said, it will be a little bit more difficult than that. Um, the key to understanding square roots is first to understand the whole idea of a perfect square. And here's a classical definition of a perfect square. A perfect square is a number that can be expressed as the product of two equal integers or numbers. So one can be expressed as one times one, right? Because one times one is four. Four can be expressed as two times two. And two and two are equal, and four can be expressed as two times two, because two times two is four. Nine can be expressed as three times three, um, because three and three are equal. And if you multiply them, and the, the meaning of the word product, if you, if you multiply them, um, they'll equal nine, 16, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, and so on. So that's the concept of the perfect square. And now let me just kind of move on here to the concept of the square root. So the square root, so take for example, the square root of four is two, meaning that its root number, the number that can be multiplied by itself to get that number four, the root number of the square root of 4 is 2. The same way we could look here with 9. What's the square root of 9? Well, the root number of 9 is 3 because we already know 3 times 3 is 9. And so that is what a perfect square is. And we could go on and we could choose 25 and we can say what's the square root of 25 where we know the square root of 25 of course is 5 because the root number the number that can be multiplied by itself to equal this value is 5 so now that is what a perfect square is it's the perfect square is a number that can be expressed as the product of two integers so you can express 9 as 3 times 3 you can express 64 over here as 8 times 8 you can express 225 as 15 times 15 because these two are equal integer equal numbers now coming over here to the square root of 80 how do we simplify that well to simplify 80 what we're trying to do is to look at the largest perfect square that exists within the number 80 so the largest perfect square so we're not looking for the perfect square the number times itself that equals 80 but we're looking for the largest perfect square the largest one of these numbers that divides into this number and so uh, Obviously, we're going to have 16 because 16 times 5 is 80. So our next step will be to break that down to the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, right? Because 16 times 5 is 80. So we, we are simplifying that square root of 80 by breaking it down. And so the way we do that is step one, we find what's the biggest perfect square, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. What's the biggest one of these perfect squares that goes evenly into 80? And so I found that that was 16. And, you know, how did I find that? And I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get that question. You, there, there is no how. You just have to try them out. So you would try 4, and you would say, yeah, 4 goes in there, but maybe there's a bigger one. You would try 9, and you would say, yeah, maybe 9 goes in there, but maybe there's a big one. You would say 16, and then you would see 16 is it. But maybe if it was a larger number maybe you had to go higher to 25 or 36 but we're looking for the largest perfect square that goes evenly into the square root okay so now that we got that and again what we're doing we're trying to get you ready for the GED test because 
I'm not just simply just trying to teach you a basic math lesson. I'm trying to give you some quick things that you can think about so when you run the GED test, you can have success with these kinds of problems. So now we know that the square root of 16, and so we know that it's square root or its root number is 4. Why? Because 16 can be expressed as 4 times 4, so the root of that is 4. And then we know that 5 is not a perfect square. So we're just going to leave it as it is. So the 4 times the square root of 5. Let's take another one. Let's say we had the number 48. Okay, and so we're going to look at, well, what's the largest of these perfect squares that goes evenly into 48? Well, that could be 1, that could be 4, that could be 9, that could be 16, that could be 25, that can be 36. But in this case, we know it's going to be 16. And 16 goes into 48 three times. So 16 times the square root of 3. So again, we're going to say, well, what's the root of, of 16? It's a perfect square. Fantastic. That's 4. And what's the root of 3? We know it's not a perfect square, so we're just going to leave it as 3. So 4 times the square root of 3 would be the simplified version of that question. So now, how about this? How about if we get let's say we we'll say if we get uh, an addition we're, we're adding so say we get 75 and say make it a little interesting say we say plus the square root of 125 okay so we can look at our chart here and see um, that neither of these numbers are perfect squares because it goes from 64 to 81 and there's no 75 in there. So we know it's not a perfect square and it goes from one, uh, 121 to 144. So we know that 125 is not a perfect square. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at for the largest perfect square within these numbers okay and so it might be clear but maybe it isn't so we know one goes in but we know we can find a bigger one we know four does not nine does not 16 does not 25 aha 25 does again so when you're on the GED test you're looking for the largest perfect square that goes evenly into that square root so we have the square root of 25 times the square root of 3 plus and I think the largest perfect square here is going to be 25 again and 25 goes into 125 five times so we're gonna get the square root of 5 so we know the square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3 and we know the square root of 25 again is 5 times the square root of 5 and you would leave it like that now what if what if we had a situation where we had um, the same uh, 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 root number. So what if we had, so I'm just going to mark a line here. Now we're going to go what if, and I'm just going to write what if. Here. So what if we had 5 times the square root of 3 plus 7? times the square root of 3. Well, you know, because of our mathematical properties, because we know we could just go ahead and uh, add 5 plus 7 would give us 12 and multiply that by the square root of 3 because 5 times the square root of 3 is going to give us a value and 7 times the square root of 3 is going to give us a value. And if we added them both and multiplied them by the same number, we would get the same value. So if we had the if the if the if the squared root is the same, you can combine them if they're if we're adding them and um, uh, 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 simplify it that way. And on the GED test, they're going to look for it to be simplified in its most simplest form. That's why they're asking you to simplify it. Okay, so let's let's move on and do a couple more. Uh, maybe more complicated ones. What if we had to divide a square root? So let me just get a different color here and say if we had um, the square root of 50 over the square root of 36. Okay, so what you can do in these cases is you can just simply rewrite that as one whole square root 50 over 36 and you can just simply from this point 
Okay, so then continuing on here, we of course know that the square root of 36 is, is 6, so we can uh, just go ahead and put that 6, and then we know that the perfect square, so remember going back to our uh, previous page here, the perfect square, 25, 25 times 2 is 50, so coming over here, and uh, the square root of 25 times the square root of, uh, of Go back there for a second. Square root of 2. The square root of 25 is 5, of course. 5 square root 2 all over 6 would be our final answer. Well, again, let's take something a little bit more difficult here. So what if we had 20? times the square root of 120 over 5 times the square root of 3. Well, we're going to go ahead and simplify that, and we're going to say that's going to be 4, and we're going to go ahead and put our square roots under 1, 120 over 3. And then 120 divided by 3 is 40, so we're going to move that on to 4 over the square root of 40, right? Because 120 divided by 3 is 40. And then we are going to go back and look at perfect squares. And so is it 1? Is it 4? Well, 4 goes into 40 10 times, and there is no perfect square of 10, so we know that that's going to be 4. So we're going to come back over here and say 4 times square root of 4 times the square root of 10 and that becomes 2 so 4 square root of 4 becomes 2 because its root is 2 times the square root of 10 so 4 times 2 is 8 square root 10 would be our answer there so again, you know, we're just kind of working through uh, these problems to to understand them and to to put ourselves in the opportunity to get these questions correct on the GED test. Because remember, at the end of the day, it is about the GED test. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I am at Damon at mygedlive.com, and let me just. Uh, type that out here and so you have that here that's going to be Damon at mygedlive.com you can go ahead and send me an email and I'll be more than happy to uh, help you out in any way that I can and um, help you to have success on this test in 2015 because remember this is all about the GED test it's all about you getting the tools and things that you need in order to be successful because if you don't have these tools ready and available to yourself you know they're gonna be some of these questions on the math test and so we're just we're just giving you one more tool one more thing to help you uh, if you didn't understand anything on this page or the previous page or in the duration of this video, uh, just feel free to reach out to me. Again, this is Damon Tennant from the Get Your GED Now Test Preparation Series, helping you with the video of the week. I'm going to also attach a worksheet. So uh, as we've done some things here, I'm going to give you a worksheet that you can then go and do on your own and make sure that you have this skill down. Thank you.